Well, here we are on Temple Mount, and uh, I wanted to share with you some thoughts as I am here on Temple Mount. Excuse me. I wanted to share with you some thoughts as I am here on Temple Mount and uh, talk a little bit about the portion of the Torah we will be studying this week. Uh, it talks about, I'm talking in the book of Exodus, uh, when the people saw, I'm talking about Exodus 32, when the people saw that Moses was late in coming down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and they said to him, come on, make us gods that will go before us because the man, Moses, who brought us from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, remove the golden earrings that are on your ears of wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. And all the people stripped themselves of the golden earrings and they were on their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took them from their hands, fashioned it with engraving tool, made it into a molten calf. Upon them he said, these are the gods, O Israel, who have brought you up from the land of Egypt. And we go on, and, God, and Moses is on the mountain. He's bringing the, the, the tablets. And as he's on the mountain bringing the tablets, he, God calls to him and says, And the Lord said to Moses, verse 7, Go descend for your people that you have brought up from the land of Egypt have acted corruptly. They have quickly turned away from the path that I have commanded them. They have made themselves a molten calf, and they have prostrated themselves before it, slaughtered sacrifice to it, they, they, and said, These are the gods, O Israel, who have brought you up from the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and behold, they are stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone, and my anger will be kindled against them, so that I will annihilate them, and I will make you into a great nation. And Moses pleaded before the Lord oh his God, and he said, Why, O Lord, should you your anger be kindled against your people whom you have brought up from the land of Egypt with great power and with a strong hand? Why should the Egyptians say he brought them out of evil to kill them in the mountains and to annihilate them from upon the face of the earth? Retreat from the heat of your anger and reconsider the evil. Remember Abraham and Isaac and Israel, your servants to whom you swore by yourself, to whom you said, I will multiply your seed like the stars of heaven, and all the land which I see that I would give you to your seed, they shall possession, they shall, uh, they shall keep as, your, as their possession forever. And the Lord reconsidered the evil he had said he would do to his people. Now, uh, unfortunately, those who read the Bible in English uh, miss out a lot. The Bible in Hebrew is always has different kind of ways of understanding it. And uh, these, these ways are, are, are not by coincidence. And sometimes these ways contradict themselves. The word the Torah uses for Moses pleaded before the Lord is Vayechal Moshe. What does the word Vayechal Moshe mean? Vayechal, here it's translated as, as Moses pleaded to God. But the word Vayechal in Hebrew can have def various different roots. It can come from the word of prayer. As it says, Yachel Yisrael, to pray to God, to plead to God. And that would be, that would be Vayechal Moshe, Moses pleaded to God. But the scholars who read this verse have read it in several different ways. They have read it, Vayechal Moshe, Vayechal from the word sweet, Chalat Dvash, a, a, meaning that Moses spoke nice words to God, and he actually uh, managed to bribe God with beautiful words, and he said, please don't forget Abraham. But that's one way of reading it. There's another way of reading it, because God says, Moses, leave me alone, and I want to take care of the, get rid of the people of Israel. The one other way of reading it is Vayechal from the word Chayal, from the word Chayal, from the word strength. Moses fought with God. Moses was fighting that, no, you can't, you're not going to let you do it. There are other ways to read it. Vayechal from the word uh, to, to annul a vow. Uh, Moses canceled God. God says, listen, I promise I'm going to get rid of them because I said anybody who sins with to me, I'm going to destroy him. And I promised and I can't do that. God, Moses said, don't worry, I will annul your vow. I will cancel the, the, the promise that you made. There's another way of looking at it. Vayechal Moshe, from the word Chol. Moses referred to God not as Kodesh, but as Chol. He said, God, if you want to destroy the people of Israel, you have no holiness. And it goes, Vayechal Moshe, means God, he, he, he removed the sanctification of God. He, he, he turned God into a simpleness. And he said, God, I'm not going to refer to you as a God, as a holy. So we see all these ways of reading Vayechal Moshe, they're not coincidences because there are different ways. Some people talk to God and beg to God. Some people fight to God. Some people uh, uh, will talk to God and annul His word. Some people will go, will speak to God. But, but the main idea, the concept that Moses was there for the sake of the people of Israel, 
and said, I don't care if they all sinned, God, please postpone the punishment. And God regrets. Some, and when, when now we can also re-understand when God says, leave me alone. What does it mean, leave me alone? So we can look at that as a fighting. But it also can say, mean that God said, if you leave me alone, I'm going to destroy them. Meaning God hinting to them, hinting to Moses, listen, please pray, demand. So there are different ways of looking at their aspects. The concept is, everyone has his way of praying to God, of pleading to God, of fighting with God. But the question is, what's the idea? And the idea is, is, is out of respect to God, and out of respect to the people of Israel, and out of the love that Moses had to the people of Israel, and out of responsibility. He was the leader, and he said to God, if you erase them, erase me. I don't want to... As we recall, God made several covenants with the world. He made a covenant with, 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 the, with the, when he created the world, and, and he told Noah, Noah go build a, 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 a boat, and I'm going to destroy the people of Israel. And, and Moses, uh, and Noah did that, and he canceled. And then God made another covenant with the people of Israel, with the people with Noah, with the rainbow in the heaven. And then God said, I can't manage with all the people, I'm going to choose my people. And here we're coming once again to another covenant where God wants to cancel the covenant. And Moses said, you can't do that. You can't go ahead again and again canceling the covenant. The covenant with the people of Israel is a different covenant. It's an eternal covenant. And that is what Moses said to God. Whether he said it begging, whether he said it with sweet words, whether he, whether he said it in a prayer, pleading, or whether he said it as a annulling of the vow. The concept was Moses was their leadership of the people of Israel. And here we are, standing in, in days when we are in prayer to God, for the people of Israel, but for the entire universe, for all of humanity. And we're calling upon God. Remember your covenant with the human, with the human kind. Remember your covenant with the people of Israel. We are here in the place you told us to come and pray for you. And we are praying. In the past, they didn't let us pray here. Today, please allow us to pray here. And we're, we're getting this and we're bringing about until we reach the point where we will build the house of prayer for all nations. I bless you all. Shalom from, from Jerusalem. And shalom to my dear friend uh, from California, Santa Barbara. Shalom to Danny Daniel. Shalom to uh, uh, WA. Shalom to you all. I love you all. Blessings from the house of God in Jerusalem. Shalom from Jerusalem.